Hey everyone, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake and welcome to another Photoshop CC tutorial video. If you're just finding my channel for the first time, I'll do new Photoshop CC tutorial videos on Thursdays and graphic design videos on Mondays. So in this Photoshop CC tutorial, I'm going to be um, using what's called the color splash effect. Um, you may have seen this in things like um, Sin City and a few other places. Um, and it's a really simple technique overall to do where you're just um, basically highlighting and selecting one color in the image that you want to bring out and making the rest black and white. And we're doing that using an adjustment layer and masking so that we do it non-destructively and keep our pixels intact. You don't need Photoshop CC to follow along with this tutorial and to use this technique. Uh, you can do this with any modern version of Photoshop. I recommend uh, Photoshop CS3 or higher. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So as you can see, the original image is already great and it's rich in color. And we just put an adjustment layer with uh, black and white and our mask over it. And I'm just going to kind of show you how I did that and how I selected the individual color. So in the select menu, you have an option called color range. This is usually the easiest way to do it unless you want to manually mask out the um, colors. Now if you wanted to, in order to make this a little easier, you could um, increase the um, saturation and the color balance and shift it toward the reds in this case if you think that that'll make things easier for you and make the colors easier to define using color range. But in this case I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to actually select color range and in this case you see that it's um, selecting that red color and that's because I used the eyedropper tool to go ahead and select that and if you hold down shift you can select more colors or you can undo that if you so choose again it's just whatever you think will make the most accurate overall selection this color selection seems to be fairly accurate and there's a couple of ways we can test this You can do it by checking off invert and seeing what it creates in the mask here. We can adjust the slider and see how that affects the overall selection. And in this case, it's not selecting the skin and areas of the hair, which we definitely don't want. So it's fine that we've you know done it this way. Um, we can you know um, select a white matte and maybe that makes it a little more visible to us of what selected and did we get all our red and in this case I want to say that um, you know it's done a fairly good job you know maybe we adjust it a little more on the slider and there are clearly some things that we could go back in and clean up but I think overall that this is uh, probably gonna be a really decent selection so we're gonna go ahead and confirm that this is what we want All right. Now, based on what color range picked up with the selection, we could go to an adjustment layer, select black and white, and click OK, and that will do most of our work for us. Now, at this point, we can either go ahead and we can use our brush and our mask to refine this selection and to um, you know make sure that we get any spots that it missed. And we have a couple other options here as well. We could always go back and we could refine our selection um, using the various different tools. But in this case, I'm just going to use the brush since I have a Wacom tablet. I'm going to make sure that I have a black brush selected. Set hardness to 0 and opacity 100%. And then I'll just go back into the areas that I want to make sure are masked out here. And with the um, Wacom tablet and the uh, feature for pressure sensitivity, it's really easy to do this and to um, keep it fairly clean and accurate without any real problems or um, concerns. You just have to be comfortable with the tablet and the pressure sensitivity and you'll be fine. And that's how the basic effect is ultimately going to be brought into full prominence 
and once you get this under control you can use um, you know the color balance sliders or hue and saturation to just bring out even more of the red if uh, that's what you're going for in the areas that are black you don't have to worry about avoiding them and going over those because you know um, they're not any real issue of concern because they don't have color to be brought out um, per se so it's really not a big deal to worry about going over those you want to avoid the areas of the skin and things like that but ultimately this will work just fine and like I said you could perfect your selection before going this route you know, I'm just doing this, um, you know, for the sake of, you know, making the tutorial a little shorter and not having to fiddle around with those settings and be super precise. But you can feel free to do that on your own or even um, redefine your selection before um, taking it this far. But I think that most of that accomplishes it. That looks really good. And the only other thing I really want to do is just kind of go in here in the, um, the lips a bit and uh, do that better. And, you know, I'll leave that kind of thing up to you if that's what you want to do or not. And, again, you don't have to use a Wacom tablet, but it does certainly make things easier, especially with the pressure sensitivity feature. All right, so all of that looks good. And if I want to, I can use um, a hue and saturation adjustment layer, bump up the saturation um, you know, a bit more and really make that pop and get that red, um, a lot more red. And if there's something that um, you know looks too much in here, like this spot in the forehead, I can go ahead, take my brush, oops. I can go ahead and take my brush and paint white into the black and white area and that'll be fine I can get rid of all of that and just make it super clean and just get rid of any areas that you know I might have missed that might have picked up any of that color now that I've done my hue and saturation I can just uh, deal with cleaning up that and it's no big deal Now this isn't necessarily the only way to do this effect, but I just find this to be a very quick and elegant way to do the effect. And you can see uh, you know, the result for yourself here and that this is ultimately um, pretty good and conceptually it gets across what we um, ultimately want and it creates that look. And then if I really want to uh, bring out the best in this image, I can go to the brightness and contrast and I can bump up the contrast significantly. I could even adjust the levels. You know, maybe I want it brighter, maybe I don't. I think in this case I want it slightly darker. Again, I think that that actually looks, um, you know, really good, but I'll let you guys be the judge. Um, you know, this came out um, pretty nice, and there you have it. That is the Photoshop um, color splash effect. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, you know, um, I'm sorry I've been a little behind on different things lately. Um, I've just had quite a lot going on. Uh, those of you who um, have been following me in social media know that I had um, a family emergency um, throughout the last couple of weeks. Um, but things are getting a lot un, uh, better under control, and I appreciate all the well wishes and all the people who reached out um, you know, to me. I really do appreciate it. 
um, and I just hope that um, nothing else goes wrong and I'm able to do the rest of my videos on time for you guys. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Watch the other videos on my channel. Um, and as always, thanks for watching and thank you for your support.